Hello and welcome to this very special episode of the Autocar Professional Dialogue. Our guest today is someone who is a very strong proponent of electric mobility and he represents a company which is putting the money where its mouth is. We are talking about uh, Dr. Pawan Goenka, a Managing Director of Mahindra & Mahindra. Dr. Goenka, thank you very much for joining us on the, on the show. Good to talk to you. So let's uh, start off with the current uh, topic of electric mobility. We have seen how uh, the, the Niti Aayog has come up with a report, a roadmap for 2030. And you have said that you feel the most confident so far. Uh, why so? And uh, what is it that makes you think that perhaps this time it will not be what it has happened with any MMP or for that matter even fame sure. India scheme? So uh, let me take some time uh, because uh, uh, currently, this is my most favorite talk, topic to talk about. Uh, Mahindra invested in electric mobility way back in 2010 when we, uh, when we uh, purchased equity in uh, Reva Electric Company. Uh, and at that time, we were very uh, uh, gung-ho, very, uh, very, very optimistic about how electric vehicles will take off in India and globally for that matter. Uh, as events proved that they didn't happen, uh, we did launch our product E2O and then E2O Plus in between E Verito, E Supro, uh, but the volumes didn't take off, we stayed around 100 and uh, many people would have sort of given up and said it's time to mm -hmm. move on to something else. Mm -hmm. But we continued to have conviction. And you've invested about 600 crores so far. Yes, absolutely. We had the conviction that the need for electric vehicles is so strong mm -hmm. that it has to happen. Uh, mobility in India cannot continue to, what should I say, uh, continue to move uh, without electric vehicle because uh, the situation of air quality is so, so bad, because our need to reduce uh, oil import, crude oil import is so high uh, that it's had to happen. Okay? We all know about the constraints, why it has not happened. Uh, yes. We've talked about it many times, so I won't mm -hmm. go into it. Well, the government of India always had the right intentions uh, to promote electric mobility, but somehow the kind of thrust that was needed uh, to make it happen uh, didn't come up to now. Okay. While many, many manufacturers, I'm sure, were kind of waiting in the wings to see if they should jump into the fray of electric vehicles, but they didn't, thinking that time hasn't come in yet. And perhaps let uh, Mahindra do all the hard work to, to clear the road uh, so that so that others can come in, which is perfectly fine. I mean, mm. it's it's not a situation where, by any stretch of imagination, we think Mahindra will remain a sole player in, mm. in electric mobility. As soon as the volumes go up, other players will jump in, and that is to be expected. What has changed in the last six months, uh, by virtue of perhaps some change of uh, uh, senior government officers, change of some ministers, uh, attention of the prime minister's office, Niti Aayog, whatever it might be. But there is a very, very serious look at electric vehicles with a realization that without electric vehicles, our cities will become impossible to live in. Okay? It may have happened because of the 2016 Supreme Court or NGT ban on diesel vehicles. So maybe that was a blessing in disguise for electric vehicle proponents like us. It may have happened because of all the various things that get written about uh, climate change, about Corporate everything today. So whatever it might be, but mm. suddenly there must have been a, a, a sort of fuse mm. uh, that, that blew somewhere saying that, oops, if we don't do it, uh, we'll be in trouble. And government has therefore taken a lot of pains, at least three or four departments of government of India, Niti Aayog, PMO, I'm told, are working very, very aggressively on how to make electric vehicles happen. And therefore, Niti Aayog policy that has come out, statements from some of the ministers like Mr. Piyush Goel, Mr. Katkari, uh, Mr. Geete have also talked about uh, uh, the need and desire uh, for electric vehicles. Uh, Mr. Kant has given uh, a lot of uh, sort of interviews, panels on this. So if you put it all together, there is a tremendous interest that we see today on electric vehicles. Now from Mahindra's viewpoint, what has changed is one, this support, but also aggregators like Ola coming forward and saying that, yes, we want to invest in electric vehicles. Today they may not be affordable in terms of the numbers not working out, not adding up, 
but this is the future. And therefore, when Ola also came on the scene and said, now we want to buy E2O Plus or e Verito mm. and do pilots in cities like Nagpur and more cities later on, suddenly the equation worked. Mm. Okay. So, with the incentive that we have from Government of India, under the Farm Aid Scheme, under the uh, GST rule now, and the state uh, benefits that we have, just about right. Mm. I wouldn't say that still there's enough money to be made for OEM like Mahindra and for the aggregator like Ola perhaps, but there is, it's just about there. So, uh, and I can understand that the, the subsidy regime, as you said, is just about right. But at every e verito or every E2O that you sell, are you making money? I won't answer that question directly. Uh, all I will tell you is that uh, the overall commercial equation is getting better with time. Uh, it is not comfortable to a point where I can say, yes, now it's done, nor is it so uncomfortable that I can say, what am I doing? Okay. Uh, with time, it will keep getting better and better because we are certainly counting on, I mean, I, I, I think as far as the price support is concerned, mm. I do not expect Government of India to do any more. Okay. Okay. I can wish for more, mm. but do not expect that something more should be done. I'm not going to go and lobby right. for something more. But at the same time, at this level, this, if the scale also grows, you don't get economy of scale because your cost structure is not that's favorable. What, that's right? what I'm saying. So now, the, what, my only request to the government of India is that stay here. Okay. Do not revisit it every six months and mm -hmm. say, I'm going to remove this or change this or add this. Stay here for the next four years. Don't touch this. At least four years. At least four years. Okay. Now the onus is on us okay. to say, assuming there will be a ramp up on volume, we have to assume that. What can I do to reduce the cost to a point that we can make it comfortable for ourselves to be able to sell these vehicles in large number? What can we do to bring technology into the product that will make it attractive for the customer to buy not just for cost but also for performance? What can we do to take away range anxiety that still exists? What can we do to have some money on the table left for an aggregator if the aggregator wants to have an electric vehicle fleet? right? All of these things we need to take on us ourselves mm -hmm. as an OEM. How do I make it happen? Okay. Okay. Clearly, if volume goes up, prices will come down. There is no doubt about it. But I would also caution that this whole view that seems to be there that electric vehicle prices are dropping, electric uh, battery prices are dropping so quickly that everything will fall in place in mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. three years. I think mm -hmm. that is overstated. Okay. It is dropping, yes, but that by itself is not going to be enough to, th 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 there are three gaps to be filled. Okay. Okay. One is the gap that subsidies cannot last forever. Mm -hmm. okay. So that means in about four years from now, mm -hmm. assuming we get four year window, we need to reach a point where say two, two lakh, two and a half lakh is removed mm -hmm. and I still need to make it affordable. Yeah, so that is one one one. Two and a half lakh removed from a car off. In, in the sense that uh, there is a GST subsidy, there is a okay. farmer scheme and all that. Mm. So there is there is two and a half lakh rupees kind of value mm. or support coming from government of India. Okay. So I have to prepare for that being removed four years from now. So I need to get two and a half lakhs worth of cost reduction. Mm. Number one. Number two, I don't make money right now. Mm. Right? Just about just about variable cost break even. Mm. I mean to make some money. We cannot keep yes. keep running a business without making yes. money. So I need to perhaps add a lakh, lakh and a half kind of contribution coming mm. for, for me. So I need mm. four lakh. Mm. And then uh, an aggregator also needs to make money. So maybe he needs lakh, lakh and a half. So, so just imagine how big the task is. Five and a half to six lakh rupees reduction needs to happen. Right. Okay. So all of this cannot happen simply because batteries become cheaper. Yeah. Yes. A lot more has to be done. Okay. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'm just trying to make a point. And all these numbers are just mm. given for getting a feel. They are not mm. exact numbers, so mm. don't don't start <laughs> calculating. I will not give you exact numbers. Okay. Uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is there is a lot of work that needs to be done to reduce the cost. Mm. Okay. Also, while I'm reducing cost, I need to make the product better. Mm. Today, more appealing and more. Well, first of all, range. Yes. Today we are doing 140 kilometers. That will not cut it for the long run. We have to get to at least 200 kilometers. That means I have to have more powerful battery, right? So that will cost more. So a lot needs to be done to make electric vehicles self-sufficient without 
government support. Mm. I cannot expect the consumer to pay a single rupee more because it is electric. Mm. Some may. Some may. Okay? There may be some people mm. who think, yes, it's good for environment, this, that, other, so I'm going to spend more money. But most people will not pay extra money for electric vehicles. That we have realized over the last five, six years. Right? Therefore, as far as consumer is concerned, it has to cost same right, on a rupees per kilometer basis as other options the consumer might have. Mm. Right. So this is the huge task. Mm. And if you are going to make the 2030-32 dream happen, mm. and I hope it happens, okay, this is the biggest challenge that we have right now. It is not the infrastructure challenge. Infrastructure can be done. It's a matter of spending 1,000 crore, which is not a big amount of money mm. in the scheme of things uh, to set by, up charging by government of India, uh, but can be done. Okay, It's a matter of getting charges finding spots to put in, it will happen. The big task is how do I make it affordable okay, for all the people concerned without government subsidy. With government subsidy can be done easily, no problem. Yeah. But without government subsidy, how do we make it affordable? Mm -hmm. okay? the, ch the technology is moving very rapidly. right? Consumers' expectations are very high on electric vehicle. Uh, therefore, for OEMs in India, they need to very quickly ensure that they have access to the right technology and uh, able to bring it into India in a way that we make sort of meet the make in India challenge, mm. technology challenge, costing challenge yes. all together. Mm -hmm. So my only concern is that I hope people are not trivializing it that everything is done. Now it's just a matter of ramping up. Mm -hmm. It's not that simple. You think here industry academia can play a good role collaboration Yes and no. Okay, yes and no. As far as technology is concerned, a lot is happening in the world. Okay. I don't think that we should venture into saying that I'm going to develop battery cell technology ground up. Mm. Okay, uh, because you'll be starting at a point where you're way behind where the today's state of art is, and right. from there to catch up there will take. Take, take Very long. challenging, yes. What we need to do is, that's the only thing that we should take as given. That is the cell, battery cell. Mm. Okay. Everything else we should develop around. No? Okay. For that, where is their existing knowledge which we just bring in and where we need to develop new knowledge that doesn't exist and that's where we have industry academia collaboration we need to look at. Mm. So, yes, there is a place for collaboration but we must do it in the right place mm. and not sort of go after some very uh, noble cause of saying I'm going to do something mm. which will redefine the world mm. or redefine electric vehicles. Or may or may not yield the intended yeah. result. So, so, so basically we need to see how do we make electric vehicles work in India mm. so that it takes away the load on the environment that's happening through uh, tailpipe emission today. It takes away the load on the environment of CO2 emission. It takes away the, the, the sort of import of uh, uh, oil, crude oil. What do I need to do? And let's work on that on that, on that right now. Towards that, are you also open to collaboration maybe with another OE? Uh, we are open, uh, but right now uh, I think uh, everybody is kind of keeping their cards to their chest, as so are we. Uh, on, on what are our plans, what do we want to do, where do we want to get it completed. But just, just imagine for a second that if what Niti Aayog is saying happens, 2032 all vehicles are electric and assuming that our market is growing at the rate of 10%, okay. Okay? in 17 years we will quadruple our volume. Which today stands at about? Uh, 250,000 vehicles a month only passenger vehicle, right? Quadruple meaning one million vehicles a month. Mm. If anybody believes that that's what it will be, even if you believe it will be 10%, right. don't believe 100%, yeah. it's 100,000 vehicles a month. 100,000 vehicles a month, OEMs are going to do a lot. Yes. Today in India, there's only one OEM that sells 100,000 vehicles yes. a month, yeah. total, all together. Right. Right. So, so, so the stakes are very high. Stakes are very high for the industry, stakes are very high for each OEM mm. uh, and uh, nobody is going to do anything that will compromise with the competitive 
uh, edge that they think they might have, whether it is Mahindra or any uh, multinational or, or any other any other Indian OEM. Uh, nobody is going to do that. Okay. The thing that still remains to be seen is how will the market evolve? Mm. Okay, is the market going to evolve in the space that we have right now, which is a low end vehicle, low range, more of commercial application like aggregation of for, for, for shared mobility or will it evolve like high-end western kind of electric vehicle market the Tesla Tesla kind of vehicles costing 25 lakh 30 lakh mm. where will the market go my view is it will be both the okay. bulk will come from the former mm -hmm. uh, the image will come from the latter okay, okay. so 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 if I look at the premium segment today that India has, 50% of the premium segment becoming electric by 2030 mm. is not out of realm of response, realm of reality. Okay. okay. Which means that all premium segment players will have to have electric vehicles. Mm. Yes. And some non-premium segment players will may also enter. see there is an opportunity right. and may get there. Mm. So it's it's going to be it's going to be uh, amazing transformation that we will see over the next 15, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15 years right. uh, on what happens to the market. It's become very interesting uh, talking about electric vehicle technology. So, and when you talk about premium, uh, I was thinking at some point, maybe 5, 7, maybe 10 years down the line, do we see Mahindra electric vehicle in USA maybe uh, competing against the likes see, of Tesla, a, for example? It's a, it's a very different game now, okay? And we don't know how the game will get played out. We don't know who will emerge uh, in the forefront. Okay. Um, do we aspire for it? Yes. Will it happen? I don't know. Okay. Uh, and and uh, again, the, the electric vehicle game will bring in many new players. Mm. Right. So today, if there are 50 auto manufacturers in the world, there will probably be 100 electric vehicle manufacturers in the world. Interestingly enough, to become an EV manufacturer the may be easier okay. than becoming a ICE engine uh, vehicle manufacturer because there are a lot of things that you have to worry about in ICE engine, uh, design, manufacturing, servicing that you don't need to worry about in electric. Vehicles. Everything is relatively simpler. Relatively simpler. It's not. It's not. It's not simple. Mm. Relatively simpler. Right. Right. So there. Uh, there I have a question. Once EV industry takes off. Do we see a drastic change in the whole uh, manufacturing and the supply chain part also? Because manufacturing is not that complex. You don't need, for example, it, it's not a, such a labor intensive industry, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, no, from I a supply chain perspective also. I won't say that. I won't say that. See, if you imagine for a minute, take Mahindra's example. Okay. Suppose you say that Igatpuri plant is a supplier of engines. Right to Mahindra and Nasik plant is my manufacturing plant, okay, which is the reality. Mm. In electric vehicle scenario, same thing. Mahindra electric is a supplier of the engine. So instead of it coming from Vigatpuri, it comes from Bangalore. But you don't have so many so many parts to assemble, therefore you don't perhaps no, but don't see, need so many people. But to see for a vehicle assembler, engine is one part. Right. So the complexity is with the engine manufacturer. Yes, right? yes. So when you are assembling an electric powertrain, you're not assembling any moving part. Right. Nothing moves. Right. Right? Right. Right. When you are assembling an engine, there are lots of moving parts. Right. So the complexity is in making the engine versus making a, a battery powertrain. Right. But don't forget that the battery assembly itself is not bolting few things. It's critical. Critical. I mean, the amount of technology that will go in yeah. uh, is very high order. Okay. We have come after 100 years of making ICE engine, or 150 years of making ICE engine, 130 years of making ICE engine. One has come to a point where failure rate is two per thousand or one per thousand, one and a half per thousand. For electric vehicles or electric powertrain to reach that level, will take time. It won't happen overnight. But the word is used to that kind of failure from power and they will not go back to 100 per thousand. Yes, yes. Therefore, from word go, oh. the reliability that you have to bring into that powertrain, electric powertrain is very mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. right? 
and therefore the amount of automation that you will have to do, amount of uh, quality check that you have to do, amount of uh, intelligence that you have built into your whole supply chain or whole manufacturing process is going to be of very high order. There are only few, few plants in the world today for electric battery. Right? We are just discussing right now, uh, we are having reviews going to various plants understanding how to make electric, uh, so, sorry, how to assemble battery. Right. It's fairly complex technology, fairly complex technology. Right. So, so a lot to be done. So don't, uh, again it is being oversimplified in saying there is nothing, no big deal, electric mm -hmm. vehicle, everything is simple now. You mm -hmm. glue some panels and you bring in a battery, stick it in, connect mm -hmm. some cables, you are done. Right. That's not how, <laughs> that's not not how it is. Yeah. That's not how it is. So, so again I am just sort of cautioning that, uh, well I am very excited about electric vehicles uh, and I am very happy that things are moving in a direction where suddenly we see uh, a, a, a silver lining or, or, or a light there in the tunnel about electric vehicle. But the task is not trivial, mm. it's nowhere near done. And technology wise also technology it's Technology is moving very rapidly. Whoever is coming into electric vehicles, whether as a supplier or as a component or as an OEM, will have to put in tremendous effort to make it happen. And government has to continue to support it. Right. If the government of India thinks that within six months uh, their job is done, they can move out and now the market forces will take over, it won't. It won't. 